Peace and love, black families. The Prince of Pan-Africanism, Dr. Umar Johnson, coming to you live and direct from Tokyo, Japan. I know I just left you a brief while ago, talking to the sisters about relationships and dating the rules of romance with regard to my upcoming book by the same title. My book will be coming out uh, this fall or this winter, God willing, before the end of the 2017 calendar year for sisters only relationships and dating the rule of romance for some reason i'm over here in tokyo and i cannot sleep i don't know why i cannot sleep but i'm full of energy which is very ironic and unexpected because i love sleep the prince of pan-africanism loves to sleep i don't know if my biological clock is still on east coast philly time uh myself in a good hostess uh, sister champagne who did a good job taking me around today we did a lot of walking, we did a lot of traveling on the Tokyo public transportation, so I should be tired. I don't, I can't explain this. Maybe this is the spirit of the ninja. Maybe this is the spirit of the samurai. Maybe this is the spirit of the African ancestors who came to Asia tens of thousands of years ago to build and civilize the country. I don't know where this energy is coming from. Maybe it's coming from Prince Siddhartha himself, Gautama Buddha, whom I consider to be the greatest psychologist of all time, who in fact was an African. So yes, I'm still up. It's five o'clock in the morning in Tokyo. I can't believe I'm still up because I do not rise early and I love sleep. So how do you explain someone who does not rise early and who loves sleep to still be up at this time? I don't know how to explain it. But be that as it may, since I am up, I might as well teach. I am a teacher at heart. It's one of the reasons why we will be working to build the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey RBG International Leadership Academy. So today I want to talk about something very important and I want to talk about understanding white supremacy, the 11 essential principles of the code of white supremacy. White supremacy is a code. All white people participate in this code all white people adhere to this code and it is important for us as African people in order to navigate this code we must understand this code one of the greatest miseducations against African people is the fact that we have not deciphered this code we have not intergenerationally transmitted this code we have not taught our children this code and it is very important that we master the code of white supremacy so that we can decode the power structure so that we can ultimately destroy it and rebuild it. So let's talk about this. The first principle of white supremacy that you have to understand, the first essential premise, principle of white supremacy that we have to understand, and this is going to be difficult for a lot of you to understand this because we were raised in the church and we were raised in the masjid. And because all black religion, even African spirituality, even African spirituality, all black religion is colorblind. And that is one of the biggest reasons why black religion has not been able to serve the best interests of African people because our religion which is so essential to us as a spiritual people, our religion is colorblind. So how can a people suffering from color prejudice be freed from that color prejudice when in fact their most critical institution, the church and the masjid, is colorblind? So it's going to be difficult for many of you to accept rule number one because of your indoctrination. But it is my job to wake you up and bring you into the consciousness of your indoctrination so it can be overthrown because only that which is understood can be overthrown only that which is understood can be destroyed only that which is understood can be ultimately refuted rejected and done away with so the first rule the first of the 11 essential principles of white supremacy the first rule of the 11 essential principles of global white supremacy is that all white people are racist. All white people are racist. Now, I know I have some Europeans trolling my Instagram and my Facebook, and I don't mind you being here because you need to be educated again. 
Okay, you as Europeans, as Anglo-Saxons, as Jews, as Irish, as Portuguese, as Spaniards, as Italians, you need to be educated. But I do want my white visitors to understand that I overstand that no matter how educated you become about your code of white supremacy, you will never violate that code, nor will you ever operate outside of that code. Okay, many black people are under the false erroneous belief that if we educate white people about who we are, racism will cease to exist. Many of us as Africans believe that if we educate white people as to who we really are, racism will cease to exist. Well, I can assure you that that is a fallacy. I can assure you that that is a lie. I can assure you that that is nothing more than a fragment of of your imagination. White people are already educated about who you are. That's why they are racist. You don't need to be racist against the people over whom you exercise superiority. Racism is not necessary when you're dealing with inferior people. Racism is only necessary when you are dealing with equals or people who are superior to you. The fact that we even have racism clearly Con con connotates and denotes that African people are not inferior. You do not have to devise a system of authority, control, and domination in order to keep inferior people in check. When people are inferior to you, you don't even have to be conscious of them. Do you understand? So the fact that we have a system of global white supremacy clearly articulates and communicates to you that you are not inferior to Europeans. Facts. 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 Rule number one, rule number one, the essential rule, the first essential rule, and these are in no particular order, the first essential rule of white supremacy, the code of white supremacy, is that all white people are racist. I must say this again. All white people are are racist. I'm going to say this again. All white people are racist. That means your wife. That means your husband. That means your white sister-in-law, your white father-in-law, your white friends, your white neighbors, your white Muslims, your white Christians, your white capitalists, your white communists, your white Jehovah Witnesses. All white people are racist. And you have to understand Rule number one, in order to understand the others, because they are all based upon this rule. All white people are racist. Now, for the benefit of my Africans who are watching this lesson, and to the benefit of the Europeans who are watching as well, allow me to clarify when I say all white people are racist. When I say that all white people are racist, that does not mean all white people hate black people. I repeat, when I say that all white people are racist, that does not necessarily follow that all white people hate black people. I don't agree with that. I do not think that all white people hate black people. I think that most white people hate black people, but I don't believe that all white people hate black people. Racism has nothing to do with emotion. Racism has nothing to do with emotion. Racism has nothing to do with anger. Racism has nothing to do with hate. Racism has nothing to do with any type of an emotion. Racism is non-emotional. Racism is thoroughly political. Racism is thoroughly economic. Racism is thoroughly intellectual. Racism does not deal in emotions. Racism deals in power. Racism deals in power. Racism deals in power. So when I say all white people are racist, I'm simply saying that all white people are committed unapologetically to the preservation, maintenance, and continuation of the domination that Europeans have over African life. I'm saying that all white people, whether they hate you or not, all white people, whether they hate you or not, are 100% unapologetically committed to the continuation of white rule on the planet Earth. In other words, they are committed to the authority. They are committed to the power. 
They are committed to the legitimacy. They are committed to the resource control. They are committed to the religious control. They are committed to the cultural control. They are committed to the institutional control. So when I say all white people are racist, I am not saying all white people hate black people. I'm saying all white people benefit from a white privilege that none of them want to give away. All white people benefit from a white privilege that none of them want to ever abandon all white people benefit from a privilege and you must understand that the privilege that Europeans benefit from the privilege that Europeans benefit from only comes as a result of the oppression of African people so you cannot want to protect white privilege and at the same time not want to continue to oppress Africans because you can only exercise or realize a white privilege vis-a-vis -vis the oppression of African people. White privilege and black oppression go hand in hand because if there was no black oppression, there would be no white privilege. If there was no black oppression, there could be no white privilege. And unfortunately, we as African people often fail to understand white supremacy and the fact that all white people are racist because we keep on evaluating white people through the lens of emotion. So what you have to do is you have to take off your emotional glasses. Come on, take off your emotional glasses. I need you to take off your emotional glasses. Take them off. Take them off. I need you to take off your emotional glasses and then put on your political glasses. Put on your political glasses. Okay? You will never understand racism if you keep dealing with it from emotion. And because we keep on dealing with it from emotion, okay, and because we keep on dealing with it from emotion, we are often confused and tricked up whenever white people who we feel care about us, stay with me, when white people who we feel care about us, when white people who we feel care about us, about us, okay, do things that clearly manifest their racism, we are confused. When white people who claim they care about us engage in thought or behavior, okay, that manifests racism, we are confused because we say to ourselves, we say to ourselves that this is my white friend. I know they care about me. This is my white friend. I know that they care about me. Well, guess what? They may care about you as an individual African, but they don't care about us as an African people. I repeat, they may care about you as an individual African, but they don't care about us as an African people. They may care about you as an individual African. They don't care about us as an African people. And what you need to understand is that intergroup behavior, intergroup behavior is regulated by the power structure of their race. In other words, white people do not make policy. They do not make policy for individual black people. They make policy for the whole race. They make policy for the whole race. And you need to understand this because when you understand that intergroup relationships is based on a power dynamic that does not yield to your personal emotional relationship with a white person, you begin to understand how insignificant your personal emotional relationship to a white person is. So when they do things against you, you should not take it personal because it's not personal. It ain't about you. It's about them. Racism ain't personal. Racism is business. Racism ain't personal. Racism is business. Racism ain't personal. Racism is business. And this is exactly why. This is exactly why a white person can be nice to you and mistreat other black people. This is exactly why a white person can care about you and still create AIDS. They can care about you and still take the life of your child. They can care about you and still disadvantage your community. They can care about you and still miseducate our children because you are confusing your individual, personal, emotional relationship with white folk with the relationship 
between the races. You are confusing your personal, irrelevant, insignificant relationship with Europeans. You're confusing that with the relationship that exists between the white race and the black race. It's time for you to wake up. And I was sent here to wake you up. And I am going to wake you up. Even if it kills you. Because as I teach, as I teach, in order for the African to live, the European inside of you must die. In order for you to give birth to your divine African self, we have to first suffocate the cracker living in your soul. Because every black man has a white man living in his body. And every black girl has a white girl living in their body. And until we perform an exorcism, until we exercise the demon, until we exercise the ghost of white supremacy, we can never live. We can never live. You got to kill the cracker inside and for the African to live. Facts. Facts. So never again should I hear any of you talking about the good white people in your life. They may be good white people in your life, but when they deal with us as a race, this ain't personal. When they deal with us as a race, the code through which they deal with us is systematically implemented and there are to be no aberrations to that code. There are to be no aberrations to that code. So your personal relationship with Europeans has nothing to do with their commitment. Your personal relationship to Europeans has nothing to do with their obligation. Your personal relationship to Europeans have absolutely nothing to do with the agenda of one race to destroy and oppress another. All white people are racist. Racism has nothing to do with emotion. Racism is all about power and your personal relationship is irrelevant to the agenda that they have for African people. All policy is set for the group. It is not set for the individual. That's rule number one. Rule number two, white people do not share power with black people. White people do not share power with black people. Historically, we have seen this play out for the past thousands of years. We have seen this play out for the past hundreds of years. Okay? Okay? We've seen this play out time and time again. They came into Africa bearing gifts. They came into Africa bearing gifts, offering brotherhood and sisterhood. Look at Africa now. Look at Africa now. Five centuries of destruction. Five centuries of slavery. Five centuries of, centuries of colonialism. Five centuries of resource rape. Five centuries of European financial control. They don't share power with black people. Anytime a white person approaches an African claiming to want to go into a business undertaking together, you can bet your bottom dollar that you will be manipulated, you will be connived, and you will be deceited out of your share of equal ownership. They do not share power. If anyone disagrees with me, I challenge you. If anyone disagrees with me, I challenge you. Show me a country. Show me a corporation. Show me a business. Show me an enterprise. Show me a musical business. Show me land. Show me resources. Show me international trade, show me government, show me any undertaking in world history. Show me any undertaking in world history where the European has shared equally with Africans. Never, never, never. So whenever you hear anything about power sharing, let's look at South Africa, the Republic of South Africa. Shout out to my brothers and sisters in the Republic of South Africa, Johannesburg, Pretoria, Durban, Soweto, Alexandria, Cape Town, Eastern Cape, KwaZulu. I will be back in South Africa before the year is over to do my own Dr. Umar Johnson lectures. In South Africa, they say that they have a multiracial government. In South Africa, they say that they have a multiracial government. They claim that they share power, but the African National Congress, 
the ruling government of South Africa doesn't own a single bank. The African National Congress, the ruling government of South Africa doesn't own a single diamond mine. The African National Congress doesn't own a single gold mine. How in the hell can there be power sharing between black and white in South Africa when the whites own all the resources and the blacks hire almost none? They don't share power with Africans. And y'all need to wake up and smell the coffee. Y'all need to wake up and smell the coffee. I'll give you another example. Our beautiful black sister, Serena Williams. Our beautiful black sister, Serena Williams, who we love and respect. Okay? Greatest tennis player in history. She recently married a European. She's impregnated with this European. Now, marriages are business institutions. Serena Williams has much more wealth than her husband. Serena Williams has much more wealth than her husband. And even if she didn't, even if she didn't, and I hate to say this because I don't want to see our sister hurt. But that man didn't marry her because he loves her. That man didn't marry her because she loves her. If she was not Serena Williams, the great tennis champion, they would not even be together. They would not even be together. So he's entering into this relationship as a military strategy to rob her of some of her wealth. You don't have to believe me. You don't have to believe me. Come back to me 10 years from now. Come back to me 20 years from now. Of course you don't think it's accurate. Because you don't understand white supremacy. Come back to me 10 years from now. They will no longer be married. They will no longer be married. And I don't wish that upon my sister. But I understand white supremacy. And she does not. He did not marry her because he loves her. That man is not intending to spend the rest of his life with Serena Williams. I promise you that. I promise you that. First of all, he don't even know what to do with all that. She need an unapologetically African alpha male to handle that. He can't handle that. He don't even know what to do with that. Okay? But I promise you, he will not be married to her for the rest of her life because he did not marry her for that. She is nothing more than a financial investment. She is nothing more than a financial investment. White supremacy is non-emotional. White supremacy is non-emotional. White supremacy is non-emotional. Number three, white supremacy is ruthless. White supremacy is ruthless. Do you know what ruthless means? Do you know what ruthless means? To be totally ruthless, that means you are devoid of any moral code. And if you have a moral code, it does not in any way, shape, or form impede your ability to carry out your agenda no matter how horrific it is. White supremacy is ruthless. It is ruthless, brothers and sisters. It is ruthless. White supremacy is ruthless. It is ruthless. If they have to create AIDS, they will do it. If they have to create Ebola, they will do it. If they have to poison your children, they will do it. If they have to mass incarcerate your men, they will do it. If they have to homosexualize the babies, they will do it. If they have to blow the levees in New Orleans during Hurricane Katrina, they will do it. If they have to tear down the Twin Towers in New York, they will do it. Whatever they have to do, they will do it. It is ruthless. White supremacy is ruthless. It has no moral code. And this is what's wrong with black folks because you don't understand the ruthlessness of white supremacy. So when I tell you they invented AIDS, you say impossible. When I say they invented Ebola, you say impossible. When I say they put Obama in office to homosexualize black America, you say impossible because you don't understand ruthlessness. You don't understand ruthlessness. You've been politically miseducated by the church. You've been politically miseducated by the masjid. You've been politically miseducated by public school. You've been politically miseducated by your community. And Dr. Umar Johnson was sent by the ancestors to wake you up. Because time is running out. It's 11.59 on the clock. It's 11.59 on the clock of African survival. It is 11.59 p.m. on the clock of African survival. Time is running out. We got to get it together. It is ruthless. African people have a hard time understanding and embracing the ruthlessness of white supremacy because we are not that way. It is hard for... This is one of our immaturities as a people. This is one of our immaturities as a people. We have a very difficult time stepping outside of our African worldview. We have a very difficult time stepping outside of our African worldview. We have a very difficult time stepping outside of our African worldview and evaluating other people from their worldview. 
You will never understand the European and his consciousness until you evaluate him from his worldview, not your own. African people don't create bombs. Europeans do. African people don't create diseases. Europeans do. African people do not disrupt nature. Europeans do. African people do not inflict genocide on each other. That is not historically African behavior. It is European and you don't understand it because you're not looking at this from his worldview. He has an ice temperament. He has an ice temperament. The Arab has a sand temperament. You have a sun temperament. You have a sun temperament. The European has an ice temperament. And the Arab has a sand temperament. And because you don't understand their psychoclimatology, because you don't understand their psychoclimatology, because you don't understand their psychoclimatology, you fall prey to the evil machinations every time. Facts. Facts. It's time to wake up. We got work to do. We got work to do. If you want to be a more, be a more. I'm not a more. You want to be a Hebrew, be a Hebrew. I'm not a Hebrew. I am an African. That's an A-F-R-I can. That's what I am. I respect your right to identify as you choose, but you will not troll my page. I will block your ass if you come again. I am not no more. The word more means black. It is an adjective. No different than Negro, no different than black. It is an adjective. It is not a noun. Stay off my page with the nonsense. Take your anti-African agendas off of my page. On this page, we do unapologetically African. On this page, we are 100% happy to be African. I respect you. Take it elsewhere. We Africans here. I'm repping the RBG. I'm not waving your flag, and I'm not waving your flag. I'm repping RBG. Show respect or get thrown out. The choice is yours. Don't do it again. Don't do it again. The most requested black scholar on this planet is a Garveyite. The most requested black scholar on this planet is a Garveyite. The most requested black scholar on this planet is a Garveyite. Take it or leave it. Now let's get back to the lesson. So we dealt with the ruthlessness of white supremacy. We've dealt with the ruthlessness. Psychoclimatology. You got to learn how to spell, my queen. Psychoclimatology. I love you. Rule number four. The fourth principle of white supremacy. White supremacy is deceptive, it is cunning, it is evasive. White supremacy is totally militaristic. The culture of white supremacy, European culture, is totally militaristic. It is totally militaristic. It is deceptive, it is cunning, it is evasive. It uses coded language, it uses double talk, it lies in your face and smiles behind your back. It will grin in your face and stab you in the back. To Saint La Overture. To Saint La Overture. The leader of the Haitian Revolution, which began on 8-2-1-1791. To Saint La Overture. He gets a message from Napoleon Bonaparte. He says to Saint, after all, we are brothers. Napoleon Bonaparte sends a message to, to Saint La Overture at the height of the Haitian Revolution. And he says, and he says, we're both Frenchmen. You were a soldier in the French army. Let's sit down and reason. If I need to respect Haiti as an independent government, I will respect Haiti as an independent government. But let us sit down like the Frenchmen we are. Let's sit down like brothers to sign. You are my brother. I am your brother. You served in my army before. It's no need for us to be killing each other. This is Napoleon talking to Toussaint the Overture. Toussaint La Overture fell for the bullshit. Toussaint La Overture fell for the bullshit. Toussaint La Overture fell for the bullshit. He went to France and we never heard from him or seen him again. He went to France and we never heard from or saw him again. Why? Because he allowed Napoleon Bonaparte to psychologically disarm him. Just like our ancestors on the continent, when the Europeans showed up, we allowed them to psychologically disarm us. Many of you black men dating and married to white women, you allowed to sign, excuse me, you allow Europeans and your white women to psychologically disarm you. And you know why they're so able to psychologically disarm us? Because our religion has already made us believe that race is irrelevant. Our religions have already made us believe that race is irrelevant. Our religions have already made us believe that race 
is irrelevant. For my Instagram family, because I know you love and support the Prince of Pan-Africanism, I'm going to let you handle the European trolls on the page, all right? So I want you to intellectually beat their ass as long as they stay on this page, okay? Now, for the ones who are just listening and learning, we're not going to mess with them. We respect that. But for the ones who trolling, I'm going to leave that to my Instagram family to get in that ass, okay? we we, we going to handle that. Okay? So... This is why they love contracts. If you notice white culture doesn't value verbal contracts. Have you noticed that? African culture, we do a lot of verbal contracts. We can shake on it. It's a verbal contract. European culture, they don't do verbal contracts. They want it written down. They want it on paper. They want it on paper. Why do they want it on paper? They want it on paper because you can lie with words really well. You can deceive with words really well. When you look at the European language, every word has two and three meanings. Every word has two and three. Why does every word have multiple meanings? Why don't every word have one meaning so people can understand how it's being used? Why don't every word in their language have one meaning so people can understand how it's being used? You know why it doesn't have one meaning? Because their language, like their culture, is based on technology. Their language, like their culture, is based on technology. So they need the words to have multiple meanings. So once you find out what this means, they'll say, I didn't mean that. I meant this. And once you find out what this means, they will say, I didn't mean this. I mean that. And then once you find out what that means, they'll say, I didn't mean this. I meant that. It is deceptive. It is cunning. It is evasive. You cannot trust it. You cannot trust it. No contract you sign will be good. No legal decree that you enter into will be good because this is white supremacy. Seldom understood by its number one victims, the African man and woman. This is white supremacy. Seldom understood by its number one victim, the African man and the African woman. Trichnology is the philosophy of white supremacy. Trichnology is the philosophy of white supremacy. Number five. The fifth principle of white supremacy is it is narcissistic. White supremacy is narcissistic. White supremacy is narcissistic. That means what? That means how they see things is the way it has to be. How they feel about things is the way it has to be. The way their news reports information is the way it has to be. The way they feel about God is the way it has to be. The way they feel about nature is the way it has to be. It is narcissistic in that its opinions is more important than anyone else's. That's right. Its agenda is more important than anyone else's. The whole world, the whole world can say this is how we want to operate. But the white supremacists will come in and say, we don't care how y'all want to operate. This is the way we want to operate. It is imperialistic. And an imperialist is a narcissist. White supremacy is imperialistic. And an imperialist is a narcissist. An imperialist is a narcissist. It is their way or the highway. It is their way or the highway. It is narcissistic. This is why many white intellectuals cannot stand to be challenged by an African intellectual. This is why many Eurocentric intellectuals cannot stand to be challenged by an African intellectual because their narcissism suggests that who are you? Who are you to question me? Who are you to question me? This is why when you go to their schools and to their universities, they never teach you how to evaluate or analyze the various philosophies and systems that their great men and women have created. They never teach you how to evaluate and analyze the systems that their great men and women have created because they are narcissistic. So you're not supposed to challenge. You're not supposed to challenge. Christopher Columbus, you're not supposed to challenge Adolf Hitler, you're not supposed to challenge the Jewish bankers, you're not supposed to challenge the European giants of propaganda, you're not supposed to challenge their scientific formulas, you're not supposed to challenge their health remedies, you're not supposed to challenge their belief that Jesus was white, you're not supposed to challenge their belief that the Egyptians were white, you're not supposed to challenge anything because they are narcissistic. What we say is necessarily the truth. And you know what the problem with that is, family? You know what the problem with that is, family? They had convinced you. They have convinced African people. 
white supremacy has convinced African people over these past four or five hundred years that the way they see it is the way you shall see it. They have convinced you to believe that the way they see it is the way that you should see it. And that's our problem. Because most of us have bought into the European worldview. We are at peace with white people dictating our lives. We are at peace with white people dictating our destiny. We are at peace with white people educating our children. No one else could be at peace with that. You walk into a black community, we don't control the politics. You walk into a black community, we don't control the religion. You walk into a black community, we don't control the businesses. You walk into a black community, we don't control who moves in and who moves out. So we don't control membership. We control nothing and we are at peace with that because the white man has convinced you that his remote control is better than your direct control. The white man has convinced you that your his remote control is better than your direct control. That's right. In his narcissism, in his narcissism, he has convinced the whole world that his way is the best way. It's so ironic. It's so ironic. We have all these doctors, but people are still dying. We have all these psychologists, but people are still crazy. We have all these criminologists, but people are still going to jail. We have all these sociologists, but we still have all these uh, social problems. Look at all these white experts that we have, all the books and all the scholarship and all the peer reviewed articles. And he hasn't solved a single problem yet. He hasn't solved a single problem yet. He doesn't even have a cure for the common cold, but he spends billions of dollars on medical research and he has convinced you. He has convinced you. He has convinced you that his way is the best way. He has no solutions. He has no, his solution for everything is war and conquest. His solution for everything is war and conquest. His solution for everything is war and conquest. And he has accepted you, African people, God's original people, the chosen people, and the first people. He has convinced you that his way is the best way. six white supremacy is a historical principle number six of the 11 essential laws rules principles the code number six white supremacy is a historical what do I mean when I say white supremacy is a historical whenever you bring up a problem that white supremacy has created Whenever you bring up a problem that white supremacy has created, they never want you to go into the history of that problem. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. We don't. Uh-uh. No. He tells you why you keep living in the past. That's what he tells you. Why you keep living in the past. Slavery is over. Jim Crow is over. We've had a black president. He never wants you to give a historical analysis. He never wants you to conceptualize and contextualize your issues in history. Why? Two reasons. Two major reasons. The first reason why he never wants you to give a historical analysis on a problem. The first reason why he never wants you to contextualize your issue in history. Because if you contextualize your issue in history, he will not be able to evade responsibility for creating your problem. He will not be able to evade responsibility for evading your problem. He will not be able to evade responsibility for creating your problem. So he never wants you to go to the history. He hates when black people bring up slavery as the central catalyst, the central causative agent in all the problems that we face. He never wants you to bring up slavery. Why? Because if you put it, if you put our problems within a historically accurate context with slavery as the beginning how can he not say he's not responsible for that? He can't. So he don't want you to talk about it because he does not want to accept responsibility because as we just got finished talking about, white supremacy is deceptive. 
He has to be viewed as the savior. He cannot be viewed as the villain. He hates to be viewed as the villain. Now, we all know he's the central villain in human history, but he does not want to be viewed as a villain. So he never wants you to provide a historical context for how he created your problems. He wants to blame you for their problems. Do you understand? Let me give an example. So, we look at the mass incarceration rate of black men. We look at the mass incarceration rate of black men in America. We look at the mass incarceration rate, the European white supremacy. The system wants you to view black men as born criminals. Born criminals who have to be incarcerated and exterminated. That's his solution. They are born to commit crimes. They are born to, this is what these animals do. That's his whole formula. That's his whole formula. Now, when it comes to Dr. Umar Johnson with that nonsense, I'm going to give a historical context to mass incarceration going back to what? The end of slavery. The end of slavery. During slavery, jails were filled with white men. During slavery, jails were filled with white men because they needed us to work. When slavery ended, the complexion of the prisoner began to change. When slavery ended, the complexion of the prisoner began to change. And prison in America went from being a male-dominated establishment to a black male-dominated establishment. It went from being a white male-dominated establishment to a black male-dominated establishment. And how did they perfect that? How did they transform the color of the prisoner? Number one, they created the vagrancy laws. The vagrancy law said that any freedman who was caught without a job, any freedman who was caught outside after curfew, any freedman who was caught sleeping on the street, any freedman who was caught stealing to feed their family because the white man would give them no job will automatically be incarcerated. So he created the vagrancy laws to entrap black men. And then he upgraded petty offenses to major felonies. That's what he did. And then in 1994, with the Bill Clinton crime bill, in 1994, with the Bill Clinton crime bill, in 1994, because you Negroes in love with the Democratic Party, because you don't understand all white people are racist, and you think that Democrat is different from the Republican. You think that Democrat is different from the Republican. You think Barack Obama is different from a Bill Clinton. And that's your problem, because you're still putting white people in categories, because you don't understand the essential unity of white supremacy. You don't understand the essential unity of white supremacy. Oh yes. Oh yes. And then on top of that, after they murdered Dr. King, April 4th, 1968, after they murdered Dr. King, April 4th, 1968, they decided to neutralize the economic power base of the black community. They decided to normalize, excuse me, neutralize the economic power base of the black community. In the 1970s, they came into the black community and they de-industrialized the neighborhood. They de-industrialized the neighborhood. They took out all the factories and all the industrial jobs. They took out all the factories and all the industrial jobs from Charlotte, North Carolina from Detroit, Michigan, from Indianapolis, Indiana, from Chicago, Illinois, from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, from Baltimore, Maryland. Oh yes, oh yes, they deindustrialized the hood and then they deindustrialized the high school. They took out the auto shop from high school. They took out the electrical shop from high school. They took out the plumbing program from high school. Oh yes, they took out the woodworking program from high school. They deindustrialized the high schools. And then after they deindustrialized the high school, the CIA brought crack cocaine in 1980 into the black community. Crack cocaine in 1980. And then 1994, Bill Clinton crime bill. 1994, Bill Clinton crime bill. So if you look at the history of mass incarceration, you will see that the mass incarceration of black men was engineered by white supremacy. We are not responsible for that. Criminals are not born criminals are made. We are not responsible for that. Criminals are not born. Criminals are made. We are not responsible for that. Criminals are not born. Criminals are made. Facts. Facts. Who were the criminals in the 1930s and 40s? Was Meyer Lansky black? Was Lucky Luciano black? Was Al Capone black? Was Bugsy Siegel black? Weren't they selling drugs? 
Weren't they running gangs? Weren't they running rackets? Weren't they breaking the law? Wasn't they evading taxes? Everything we're accused of doing today, they did it almost 100 years ago. But in the 1940s, the American government decided that they needed to unify under a white ethos. The American government decided that we need to bring all white people under the banner of whiteness. Whiteness as a weapon. And so they upgraded the Irish to white and to reward them with their new white status, they gave them the police departments in the inner cities. They gave them the police departments in the inner cities. Someone needs to do a systematic analysis on the cultural ethnicity of the police who kill black people. Okay? George Zimmerman, I believe, was half Jewish. Darren Wilson was of what ethnicity? The officer that killed um, Tamir Rice, of what ethnicity? The officers that choked Sandra Bland, of what ethnicity? And you will find Jewish, Irish, and Italians predominantly because they gave the police department to the Irish. And then they gave the fire department to the Italian. They gave the fire department to the Italian and they gave the European Jews the civil service jobs. The civil service jobs. This is the history. This is the history. You understand? But they didn't want to, they don't want you to do a historical analysis. He's a historical. He never wants you to go back. He never wants you to go back. He don't want you to say, well, let's go to Nile Valley culture. Since y'all so great, let's go to Nile Valley culture. Who taught your Greek and Roman philosophers? Where did they come from? Where did they come to learn? Where did Plato come? Where did Aristotle come? Where did uh, 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 Plato, Aristotle, Socrates, Epictetus, uh, uh, where did they come from? Your gods, where were they borrowed from? Why was Socrates murdered? Socrates was murdered for bringing Egyptian god science into Europe. Socrates was murdered for bringing African god science into Europe. They don't want to do no history. You know why they don't want to do no history? Because they have none beyond 1000 BC. You know why they don't want to do no history? Because they have none beyond 1000 BC. You know why they don't want to do no history? Because they have none beyond 1000 BC. The first literate European is who? The first literate European was who? Homer. Homer, who wrote the Iliad and the Odyssey. Homer, the first literate European. They had no literature before then. There was no intellectual societies in Europe before then. Their intellectual heritage goes back to 1000 BC. If I'm wrong, prove it. Their intellectual heritage goes back to 1000 BC. That's it. Most of the pyramids were already built by then. We have already mapped the stars by then. We didn't already create a spirituality by then. Mathematics by then. They don't have nothing before 1000 BC. So they don't want you talking no history because they can't go beyond 1000 BC. B.C. Facts. And I see some of my white visitors. Good afternoon. Some of you are having a white supremacy attack. Let's talk about the white supremacy attack. A white supremacy attack is an ego attack that Europeans experience when they find themselves in a system where they cannot intellectually or physically dominate African people. Whenever Europeans find themselves in a reality where they cannot intellectually or physically dominate African people, they have what I call a white supremacy attack. Okay, they mind go crazy, they start sweating, they get angry, they start yelling. They don't know what to do because they benefit from white privilege their whole life. They benefit from white privilege their whole life. That when they come into a situation where the white privilege does not benefit them, they have a white supremacy attack. So some of my white visitors on Instagram are having a white supremacy attack. Maybe you should get you some cold water. Maybe you should get you some cold water. Better yet, get your ass off my page. Better yet, get your ass off my page. The truth hurts. The truth hurts. But you only hearing it one time. We hear your lies every day. You only hearing my truth right now. But we hear your lies every day. You only dealing with our truth right now. And you can't take it. We've been dealing with yours for 500 years. Get your ass up out of here. You go and tell them that all the scared Negroes are dead. You go and you tell your masters that all the scared Negroes died 50 years ago. Everybody's unapologetic now. Everybody's unapologetic now. All Africans are unapologetic now. We ain't taking that shit no more. Black power. Black African power. You go run, tell that. You go run, tell that. You go run, tell that. Go get you some cold water. 
Go get you a Bud Light or some shit, a Miller Light, High Life, whatever this shit y'all drink. Get up out of here. Facts. Facts. Next. Number seven. And see, this is why I like to point out that I use my real name. I'm not hiding behind some fake Egyptian name like most of these Hotep Negroes. They don't use the, you don't know what their name is. They could be pedophiles for all you know. You don't know criminals. You don't know what the hell they done done. They reinvent their life with a fake African name. Mm -mm. I'm Umar Johnson everywhere. I'm Umar Johnson on Instagram. I'm Umar Johnson on Facebook. I'm Umar Johnson on Twitter. I'm Umar Johnson when I'm evaluating your kids. I'm Umar Johnson when I'm at the prison. That's right. I'm Umar Johnson when I'm battling Europeans. You know who I am. Okay, I ain't got no fake name hiding behind a fake name. I'm real. My life is real. You should try being real. It works. Number seven. Number seven. White supremacy is pseudo-scientific. This one is important. This one important. White supremacy is pseudo-scientific. What does that mean? What does that mean when I say white supremacy is pseudo-scientific? When I say white supremacy is pseudo-scientific, what I'm saying, family, is they love to tell you that what they believe has been proven through scientific research. Stay with me. This is important. When you study the rise of racism, you will find that it was the scientists who created it. Apartheid in America was created by the white psychologists. Apartheid in South Africa created by the white psychologists. Adolf Hitler's master race philosophy came from Joseph Goebbels, a white psychologist. They're scientists. They use their scientists to create lies and then conduct pseudo research, conduct pseudo research to try to justify. OK. They conduct pseudo research to try to justify the lies that they teach. If you remember in slavery during the Ma'afa, they said they had evidence that proved African people were half monkey. They had evidence that proved that we were half devil. They had evidence that proved that our brains were deformed. This is what they taught. And nobody questioned it because they said, we have the research. We have the research. 50 years ago, they said African children are intellectually inferior to white children. You say, how do you know this? We've done the research. Anytime you tell, we, uh, Ebola came from a monkey. AIDS came from a monkey. How do you know AIDS came from a monkey, Mr. White Man? Because our scientists have done the research. Our scientists have done the research. Hey, Mr. White Man, there's certain things that we shouldn't eat. It's not good for African body and African DNA. You should not even sell these things. People should not even be allowed to include these ingredients in food. No, it's okay. It's perfectly healthy. How do you know? We've done the research. And so they have been able to get people to back off of challenging their conclusions because every time you challenge white folk on what they believe, they bring out their fake science. They bring out their fake science. And we got Negroes in the conscious community. We got Negroes in the conscious community running around asking Dr. Umar Johnson, where is your research to prove ADHD ain't real? Asking Dr. Umar Johnson, the top black psych school psychologist in America, where is your research to prove learning disabilities don't exist? Where is your research to prove that there's a school? To, this is what you Negroes do. Caught up in the white man's science. Caught up in the white man's science. We need to see research. They said we read Dr. Umar Johnson's book and we didn't find any studies. You know why you didn't find no damn studies? Because I've been doing this for 20 years. I am the damn study. I don't need no white man from no university to support my findings. I speak the truth. As African people, our bar is not research. As African people, our bar is truth. We stand on truth. We don't stand on no research. 
Just because you put it in a book and say you conducted some controlled trials don't make it the truth. That don't make it the truth. They've been pushing pseudoscience on African people since the beginning of time. And you got the audacity and you got the audacity to question my information. I was attacked a couple weeks ago by a light skinned supremacist scholar who said I don't include no research in his books, but he include research in his. Well, if he want to quote white folks, he can quote white folks. I'm unapologetically African. I believe in self-determination. I will never quote them. I don't have a need to quote them unless it's absolutely necessary. Unless it's absolutely necessary. I've been doing this for 20 years. I know what I know. I've standardized tests. I've conducted evaluations, thousands of them. Why? With my expertise, with my history, with my background, with my experience, why do I need to go see what they're saying at Syracuse University? Why do I got to go and get information from a white man? To prove what my own African intelligence has revealed to me over the course of 20 years doing this work. Get your ass out my face. Get your ass out my face. So how do we know what you're saying is true, Dr. Umar Johnson? I tell you what you do. You conduct a survey. You go across America and you said, are there any parents here who has taken the advice of Dr. Umar Johnson? Are there any African parents who have taken the advice of Dr. Umar Johnson for your child? Can you please tell us the outcome of following his advice? I got a 100% record house, Negro. I got a 100% record house, Negro. 100%. When parents do what I tell them to do, we win. Period. Point blank in the story. That's your research. That's your research. White supremacy is pseudoscientific. And a lot of you Negroes, you go to college like I did. And get a doctorate degree like I did. And you start worshiping the white man's scholarship. That's what's wrong with half of y'all. That's what's wrong with half of y'all. Y'all worship the white man's science. Well, he said this. And he said this. And they found this. That ain't nothing but lies. The best way to get people to swallow a lie is to make it look scientific. You falling for that? You falling for that? You falling for that? The best way to make your lies look like truth is to make people think it's scientific. Please. Please. Number eight. Number eight. White supremacy is totalitarian and dictatorial. White supremacy is totalitarian and dictatorial. White supremacy is totalitarian in dictatorial. What does that mean, black man and woman? That means that there is no one or no thing that is outside of its control. It preys on everything. It is totalitarian. In other words, you're not allowed to exempt yourself from it. You're not allowed to exempt yourself from it. This is why brothers and sisters who say, we want the United States government to give black people a couple of states so we can build our own country. We want the United States government to give us a couple of states so we can build our own country. Well, we have a problem, family, because white supremacy is totalitar totalitarian and dictatorial. So if white supremacy is totalitarian and dictatorial, even if they give you a couple of states, you still ain't free. Because they are totalitarian and dictatorial. There's nowhere you going to go where you're not going to have to deal with his wrath. So then some of you come to us, the Pan-Africanist, the revolutionary Pan-African nationalist. Y'all come to us, the Garveyites. Y'all come to us, the African fundamentalists. And you say, y'all believe in repatriation. Well, a white man is in control of Africa too. So how are we going to be free running over there? And to that we say, Hold on, I got a Ku Klux Klan member on my page. Let me block this Ku Klux Klan member. Nobody scared of y'all no more. Fuck out of here. Okay. So anyway. What was I about to say before the Klan man distracted me? Um. Oh, y'all say y'all going to Africa. What y'all going to Africa for if the white man run Africa? And to that, we would say we're not going to Africa to escape the white man. Because white supremacy is totalitarian. It's totalitarian. We're going to Africa. Because when we study 
geopolitical strategy, we conclude that in Africa, we have the best chance of waging and winning the war against white supremacy. Facts. Facts. We're going to Africa, not only because it's home, not only because it is the jackpot of all nations, everybody wants Africa, but because that is where we dominate as a race. That is the land of the blacks. If we go there and fight from there, we have the greatest opportunity for victory. That is why we go to Africa. Not to run away, but to increase the chances of victory. That is why we go. Facts. It's totalitarian. It's totalitarian. Okay? And because it is totalitarian, black bourgeoisies fail to realize that once they use them against us, they coming for them. See, Oprah and Barack and all these black bourgeoisies, they don't realize that you're not in. If you think you're in, go ask Bill Cosby. If you think you're in, go ask Bill Cosby. If you think you're in, go ask Bill Cosby. He thought he was in. He thought he was in. Bill Cosby made his career off of making white folks laugh. And when black people stood up against racism, he defended the system and told us to go somewhere else and stop blaming racism. And now look, racism then bit him in the ass. Racism then beat, bit Bill Cosby in the ass. Why? Why? Because it is a total system to oppress and exterminate Africans. White supremacy is total. Barack Obama not exempt. Oprah Winfrey not exempt. LeBron James not exempt. Steph Curry not exempt. Bill Cosby not exempt. It is total. It is total. It is a total system. This is why we need the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. See, you will never win this war politically, economically, culturally, socially, intellectually, spiritually. You will never win this war until you educate your own children. And do you want to know why? Why can I sit here and say as a master educator, that you will never win this war until you educate your own children yourself. You know why I say this? Because one of the first goals of education is to make children of the victim loyal to children of the oppressor. One of the first rules of education is to make the children of the victim loyal to the children of the oppressor. So until you get your children's minds back, take all of this we see, all this madness amongst our youth from Barack Obama's homosexuality all the way on down. All of this is the result of black people not taking the educational destiny of their children into their own hands. How are you going to keep sending your children to his schools? They're being taught sympathy for his agenda. That's why black people will fight you when you talk about white folks. They will fight you when you talk about racism because they were conditioned to do, conditioned to do that. All of you were conditioned. This is why when I talked about African spirituality, Earlier, when I said no religion is African unless it believes in ancestral veneration, y'all start saying paganism. Paganism, that's the devil. Because you were taught that. Anything that is not within the scope of the white man's Christianity or the Arab's Islam is paganism to you because you are a Negro robot. A Negro bot. A Negro robot. A Negro bot. That's what your ass is. You on remote control. White man play you like he play Sega. He play you, this is you. He ain't even got to be in the hood. He got this. He played Negroes like this. Tell you what to do, how to do it. Negroes beating me down. Talking about where the school at. 
Like I can open and run a school on $500,000. Are you crazy? Cheapest school I've seen is $1.2 million. We ain't even halfway there. You whining and complaining. Really just jealous because you want that money so you can go and spend it on new bins or something. I know my mission. Go find yours. I know my mission. Go find yours. And I'm taking all those brothers and sisters with me who are serious and sincere. You know what I'm working on right now, brothers and sisters? Remember that repatriation I was talking about? That repatriation? I'm working on that. I'm working on that as we speak. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm working on that. Some of y'all going with me to Africa soon. We might got to push it back. I know I said 2018. Might got to push it back. But I'm, I'm, I'm working on something. I'm working on something right now. I'm working on something right now. And I'm going to take the serious people with me. Not no nuts. Not no nuts and part-time haters. You see. And I'm not taking none of my frenemies. Okay. Let me tell you what my frenemies are. Then I'm going to get back on a lesson. Then I'm going to get back on a lesson. Because we got three rules left. Frenemies are people who act like they are for you, but when you're not around, they're hanging out with your homies. I can't begin to tell you how many people who claim they were for me. And when, you know, I'm just scrolling through the Facebook feed, they laughing and partying with people who have done all they can to try to destroy me and my work. I'm telling you right now, I don't care who you is. OK, you ain't no supporter of mine if you friends with people who have openly tried to destroy my work. I want, I want to be clear about that. I didn't say you couldn't be friends with people who disagree. Disagreement is not hate. Disagreement. You can disagree with me all day. I don't care about that. I'm unapologetic. I don't care. If you're friends with people who disagree with Dr. Uma, that's all right. Your husband may disagree. Your wife may disagree. That's all right. I'm not talking about disagreeing. I'm talking about aggressive hatred. Aggressive hatred. Is what I'm talking about. Ain't no way in hell you with me and you rolling with aggressive haters. I don't get down like that. I'm a Leo. I am a Leo. I'm a son of the sun. And loyalty is very important. Loyalty is very important. Loyalty is very important. Okay. Let's keep on going. The ninth rule of white supremacy. White supremacy is propagandistic. White supremacy is propagandistic. What do I mean when I say white supremacy is propagandistic? I say, when I say white supremacy is propagandistic, I'm saying that they control the flow of information to serve their agenda. They own CNN, they own Fox, they own USA Today, they own the New York Times, they own the LA Times, they own the black newspapers, they own cable, they control the flow of information and in controlling the flow of information, they control the consciousness of the people. By controlling the flow of information, they control the consciousness the consciousness. They control the consciousness of the people. They control the consciousness of the people. They control the consciousness of a people. You understand? They control the images of black people because y'all don't understand that media is not entertainment. Media is political programming. Every TV show, political programming. Every rap song, political programming. Every newspaper article, political programming. Remember, I've taught you before that before you exterminate the body, you must exterminate the image in popular culture. Before you kill black men, you must exterminate the image of black men in popular culture. Before you kill black women, you must exterminate the image of black women in popular culture. And this is why I would argue that they have all these reality shows. Reality shows were invented to kill the image of the black woman. Gangsta rap was invented to kill the image of the black man. Reality shows was invented to kill the image of the black woman. And gangsta rap was invented to kill the image of the black male. Every rap song you listen to, it ain't nothing but killing other black men, going to jail, selling dope, 
exploiting women and worshiping materialism. Every damn song you hear, different artists, different beat, different flow, same message, indoctrination. And y'all let y'all children listen to this all day long. Look at the reality shows. All the women are thirsty. They ain't got no man, can't find a man, can't trust man, long weave, materialistic, sexually objectifying their body. Look at these images. And you know what's so sad about this, African people? Do you know what's so sad about this, African people? We are participating in the extermination of our own selves. We are the first people in human history marked for genocide who participated in the extermination of their own image. You're the first people. You can't name another people in human history who were marked for extermination and gladly and willingly participated in the extermination of their own selves. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to wake you up. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to wake you up. I'm not here to be your friend. I am here to wake you up. Tenth principle. Principle number 10. White supremacy is unjust. U-N-J-U-S-T. White supremacy is unjust. U-N-J-U-S-T. They are incapable of treating you fairly and equally. They are psychologically, spiritually, intellectually incapable of treating African people as people. They are unjust. That is their culture. That is their psychobioclimatology. That is the Iceman energy. That is the Iceman energy. They are unjust. They do not believe in justice. There will be no reparations unless you fight for it. They don't believe in justice. There will be no apologies for slavery unless you fight for it. They don't believe in justice. You will never win against racism in court. They don't believe in Injustice. You can't have white supremacy and justice in the same time, in the same space. They are incompatible. White supremacy is unjust. You can't have justice and white supremacy together in the same place. Y'all need to understand this. Y'all need to understand this. They cannot coexist. One is unjust. One is just. They can't mix. It's oil and water. If you want justice, you have to destroy white supremacy. If you want justice, you have to destroy white supremacy. They don't believe in freedom, justice, or equality. They believe in power, control, and authority. I said they don't believe in freedom, justice, and equality. They believe in power, control, and authority. If you believe me to be wrong, produce your evidence. If you believe me to be wrong, produce your evidence. I've studied them. I've studied them. We will be celebrating 400 years since the first ancestor was dropped off in the 13 colonies that have become the United States of America. On August the 21st of 2019, that's less than two years from now, we will be remembering 400 years of white supremacy and we still don't understand it. We still don't understand it. We still don't understand it. No justice can come from this system. No justice can. No justice can. These are the facts. And they are undisputed. Last principle. Principle number 11. Last principle. Principle number 11. White supremacy, its systems, its institutions, its leaders, its men, its women, its religions, its schools, its churches, nothing in its system, nothing can be trusted. The minute you begin to trust a white supremacist, it's church, it's religion, your boss, it's jobs, the courts, the cops. The minute you begin to trust, the minute you begin to trust white supremacy is the minute they begin 
to destroy you and everything you care about. Trust is the weapon. Trust in American democracy. Trust in American justice. Trust in white Jesus. Trust in Barack Obama. Trust in Donald Trump. Trust the system. That's what bourgeois Negroes always telling you. Trust the system. Yeah, the police shot him, but they're going to do an investigation. And that investigation will let us know if the police unnecessarily took his life. Trust, trust, trust. Who the hell you know with any common sense trusts their enemy? Who do you know with any common sense is going to trust their enemy? You do not trust white supremacy, its agents, or its institutions. You do not trust white supremacy, its agents, or its institutions. The minute you begin to trust is the minute they begin to destroy you. Brothers and sisters, it's 6.45 a.m. Has the sun come up? The sun is coming up in Tokyo. I'm full of energy, though. I speak tonight here in Tokyo. Okay, but um, I don't know why I'm not sleepy. I don't know. I should be sleepy, but I'm not sleepy. Okay. I might be back with another tutorial. Also, to the other brothers in the conscious community, please stop stealing my intellectual material. People be sending me clips of y'all. Y'all be stealing my quotes, stealing my statements, stealing my information. I mean, don't get me wrong. There's nothing totally new under the sun. But at least you can do is try to hide the fact you're using my information. You feel me? Some of y'all don't, you know, I don't even rock with you and you using my information like that came right out my mouth. Like I know y'all watch me and I know y'all study me and I ain't got no problem with that. But if you're going to quote me in your interviews and in your lectures and in your live feeds, then you're going to have to give me credit. Y'all take my hashtags and use them. Y'all take my quotes and use them. I mean, damn, where the honor among thieves at? But nonetheless, Make sure you donate to the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Coffee Academy. And we're going to keep it popping. All right. So I might go downstairs and get me some breakfast, some Tokyo breakfast. I don't know what they're going to be cooking. You know what I mean? Maybe they got some some grits and eggs down there. Give me this Tokyo breakfast. And we're going to see what's popping. You can add me on WhatsApp if you need to hit me. You can add me on WhatsApp if you need to hit me. 215-989-9858. 215-989-9858. Uh, speaking requests, speaking requests, speaking requests. Some sisters said they want me to come and do the For Sisters Only seminar. You can email that directly to Dr. Umar Speaks at Yahoo. D-R-U-M-A-R Speaks. D-R-U-M-A-R Speaks at Yahoo.com. One love, Black Family. I'm out. <laughs>